Hey everyone, welcome back to the Bay State Golf Podcast. I am your host, Sean Melia, and today's topic, today's podcast is putting a bow on my Big Cedar Lodge trip, which is now about eight weeks old. Uh, we're going to talk about my favorite course, Ozarks National, and then I'm going to just do a little dabble on the other two golf courses, which are not 18-hole championship courses, Top of the Rock and Mountaintop. Before we get to all of that stuff, just you know, the quick normal plug, uh, please subscribe to this wherever you're listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe as well. I'll be adding some video and B-roll to the podcast. Uh, so it's not just me staring at a camera and talking to you. So if you want to see what Ozarks, Top of the Rock and Mountaintop look like, go to YouTube and watch it there and please subscribe. I've also got some other non-podcast videos that I'm starting to work on after a few cool visits that I've been able to go on the last couple of weeks and a few I have in the hopper later on this summer. So there'll be some extra stuff on my YouTube there. And if you want just everything in one place and not have to worry about finding me uh, over the course of the week on Fridays, I send a newsletter out. Um, I add you know some news and notes from just golf around Massachusetts uh, and whatever's going on with regards to amateur events or professional events as they start to maybe come to the come to um, the Bay State. Particularly, we got LPGA at the end of the summer, which is exciting. But some news and notes, and then I might write something. I wrote about the Olympics last week, probably write about Keegan this week. Um, so you can find that at baystategolf.beehive.com. Beehive is B-E-E. H I I V dot com. You can join uh, hundreds of subscribers who are there, cl slowly clicking towards me being able to say thousands of subscribers, which is which is very cool. So thanks for su subscribing there and finding me at Beehive. Okay, let's get into Ozarks National, my favorite course of the three. I have done a few other episodes. Um, I talked about. Just five things at Big Cedar that you should know if you're thinking about or planning a trip out to Missouri to play golf at Big Cedar. Or if you just want to go to Big Cedar and not play golf, because you can absolutely do that too. Uh, or you can do a little bit of, of both and play some golf and do some other stuff because it is a huge, huge resort with an incredible amount of space and things to do. And then I talked about Buffalo Ridge. And I also did a podcast on Payne's Valley. Uh, those are the two 18-hole golf courses that I also played while I was out there. This is the third. Ozarks National is a core Crenshaw. It uh, measures 7,000-plus yards from the tips. And it was my favorite of the group that I played. Loved it. And I'm just going to give you a few reasons why. And uh, then give you some things, some you know, some nitpicks. I think every time you play a good golf course, there are things that people maybe don't like or I don't like. This was also a little bit of I, I took some some thoughts from the other guys I went on the trip with because some of them didn't love Ozarks National and they actually loved Buffalo Ridge more than Ozarks. So they had some some nits to pick too, and I, I took some of those to heart and I'm adding them here as well. But let's get to the likes, the things that I really loved about. Ozarks. The first one is typical of core Crenshaw golf courses in general. I've played, this was my second. Um, I actually just got to walk my third, which is not open yet. I got to go check out the pines at the international in Bolton. Um, and even just walking around there for a few hours with their director of golf, I've got some stuff coming out about that playing Ozarks. And I've also been very fortunate to play old sandwich. Um, I played that in October. That was the first core Crenshaw design I got to play. They all have the same kind of, they all have the same philosophy. And that is that it's got to be natural. It's got to fit in with the land. You never feel like you're fighting the land, even though it is on some pretty extreme property. Uh, you're in the Ozarks. There's a lot of kind of cliffs and drop offs. And that means that you know, you're going to have some funky lies, some, some awkward shots possibly, but they seem to always put you in a position where you never feel like you're fighting against a land or hitting a shot in a, into a spot that just doesn't feel quite right. Um, you're never going too far from a green to a T, which I always appreciate. Um, the course is walkable if they let you walk. However, Walking is not an option at any of these three golf courses at 
uh, Big Cedar, which is a shame, but that's what they do. That's their rule. Um, there's no getting around it. They're trying to get people through. They've got people play, paying a lot of money to play there. So I, I understand that. I'm not going to fight it. But if you wanted to walk any of these three championship hole golf courses, Ozarks would be the one. Um, it is far too long to walk Buffalo Ridge or Payne's Valley. You'd be there probably for two extra hours trying to just make your way to each hole. But this is a, just a little tighter. You feel a little bit closer to everything. Um, there's spots where you are, you know, walking off a green onto a tee and it's all just short grass. You can, you can putt it from a lot of places. So that's another kind of piece of the, of the course that I, I did like. It's very playable. It's very open. Um, well, not very open, but it's open. You have space off the tee. Um, you have options off tee boxes. If you want to hit driver everywhere, you absolutely can. If you would rather hit fairway woods or long irons, you can do that too. And you're just got to be okay. Maybe hitting a longer shot into, into a green. Um, so that's, that's just a really nice part about it. The, you know, around the greens, not super penal, good bunkering. You're not going to be in deep rough. You're not going to spend a lot of time hunting for golf balls. It's kind of like if it's gone, it's gone. Um, and if it's not, it's pretty, it's pretty findable and you're going to be able to get a swing on it. So obviously not a place where you can completely spray it everywhere. There are, you know, it's, you're in the Ozarks, you're playing on and around some cliffs and over some cliffs. But for the most part, if you, if you spray it a little bit, you're going to find it. Uh, you're going to be able to hit it. Um, and if you cannot find it, you're going to know pretty quickly, you're not going to be able to find it because it is, it's long gone. The golf course is scorable. Um, I played my best rounds here, shot my best scores here. Uh, I think some might say it, it might be even a little easier, and I'll get to why I think some of that is um, when I get to my dislikes. But it's a scorable golf course. You can you could go pretty low. You could make some birdies. You could definitely make a ton of pars. Um, if you're you know a bogey golfer, you're gonna make bogeys. And you're going to get some pars and you might even steal, you might even steal a birdie on a par five or a short par four. So there's definitely some opportunities there. Double bogeys are hard to make, um, which is always nice. Play keeps moving pretty quickly uh, because of that. I'd say my favorite stretch of Ozarks is comes at holes nine through 12. Eight's a cute little par three good hole 13 is a is a kind of a a big par, a big par 4 but 9 is a really good par 5 that kind of sweeps around a huge waste area bunker where you hit your tee shot and you've kind of got to figure out how much you want to bite off to have a shorter iron into the green it's a three shotter for sure um, you could probably bang it up pretty close to the green if you, if you felt brave enough to hit a fairway wood, um, or driver off the deck. If you're, you know, on vacation, you just want to give it a whirl, but it's a really, it's a really good hole just because it makes you feel uncomfortable on that second shot. Just because you are trying to figure out how much can I bite off? How close do I want to get to this big kind of running waste area that goes most of the way down the left. If you, if you just get it, pull it a little bit, you're down in it, you're dealing with sand and grass and tufts of grass, kind of a little like Pinehurst, uh, where you could just get a really bad rough lie and, and you're looking suddenly at making a pretty easy bogey after having a, a layup, um, and a long iron in your hand. So nine is very good. 10 is a blind T shot. Uh, you don't have much room, right? Got a ton of room left. And the second shot is, is really good. You're hitting uphill to a, a pretty big green. Uh, it's got a false front in the, in the front and balls can run away from you, but the green is huge. It's, it's probably the most interesting green on the golf course. When you get up on it and you look back uh, at the shot, you just had to hit. Um, it's a, it's a really good, it's a really good hole. Then you get another par five and 11, um, 11 has this big tree right down the middle of the hole. If you drew a line from the tee to the green, but you can absolutely work your way around it without much, without much trouble. Um, I was watching no laying up actually did a video about Ozarks and they got to this hole and big Randy loves trees. He loves center line trees. And, 
Uh, they were talking about this one, and and they they really liked it. It's not quite a center line tree. You can hit your drive, and you can get there in two. That is the that's the risk though. You do bring the tree into play if you really want to get there in two. Because if you hit a three wood or something, it's you could hit it low enough um, that it could it could clip the tree or hit the tree. And it's 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 a great it's a great hole. Another great hole. This little stretch is just really really strong. Um, you're kind of slowly climbing on that second shot or the third shot. Uh, the green is long and skinny, huge drop off on the left, but it's all short grass. But if you're down there and you're not comfortable with a wedge, you have to pound a putter to get up and over. And then you're, you're putting across a skinny green and the ball can get away from you. Just a really good design, um, on, on that hole. And then 12 is a Redan par three. It's very long from the tips. The first time I played it, it was just me and Ellie. We were a twosome. We got stuck behind a group of four, and we decided to play two balls. We we played from the very tips, and it was into the wind, and we hit three wood um, and and could barely make it there. It was like 240 into the wind. Uh, and then we played our normal shot, and it was like 185, 190-yard shot. The green is sloped severely right to left. It's got that kind of kicker if you miss it. If you miss it short, the ball's going to roll back. Uh, you're going to you could roll into the bunker, but it is a inc- it's a huge, huge green, and it doesn't look as big from the from the tee. But then you get up there, and the space between the bunker on the left, a typical Redan has a a bunker kind of protecting the left side of the green, but you can you have space on the right to hit a ball and kind of run it off from the right, and uh, they call it a kicker. You can kind of bounce the ball in from the right side. And it is a really stunning hole. It you're hitting kind of oh you're hitting from a tee box down over a valley and then to the green. So it feels like you're hitting downhill, but you're not really hitting it downhill. You're just pretty much hitting on a level on a level playing field, but you're hitting just over that over that valley into a, a massive massive green with a lot of slope, a couple little pockets. I'm sure they have a I'm sure they have a lot of hole in ones when they put pins in certain spots, just because there's definitely some collections area collection areas there, but nine, 10, 11, 12, really, really, really good. The closer is a really good hole too. 18. I got, there's some moments playing Ozarks where I felt like I was, I had, I was having Kapalua kind of images where you're just, you're hitting into these vast spots, vast open areas over, uh, cliffs. Uh, it is not as extreme as Kapalua. I would imagine I've never played Kapalua, but I've seen it on TV every year, um, for most of my life. And it just had that same visual and 18 definitely just had that feel to it. Um, and the clubhouse in general is, is just, is, is really good. The whole vibe, um, the whole big cedar does a nice job at each of the clubhouses of just having very simple, aesthetically pleasing stuff there. It's not overly gaudy, which doesn't quite match the rest of the resort, which can be kind of big and brawny. Um, but Ozarks is, is kind of understated. They just have a little pro shop. They have a back patio where you can get beers and sit out and watch people finish 18. You can watch people tee off on one. You can also watch people tee off on four because four is, is right there as well. And it's covered. They've got a big fireplace for when it's cold. You feel like you're kind of in big sky a little bit. So we've gone from Hawaii to Montana. But just some of the aesthetics um, in general at, at Ozarks has that, has that kind of – has that feel too. Um, so that's, that's what I, I loved. I loved the golf course. I loved walking it. I felt joy playing it when we finished. It's the place I could have turned right back around, gone to the first tee box, and just played it again. Um, I just really liked – the golf course as a whole. I love the views. Um, so that's, that's what I, that's what I loved about it. There's a few things I didn't love about it. And even as I'm talking about the things I don't love, I'm probably going to end up talking about things on the contrary that I still really liked about it. Um, the first is the greens for the most part are built to get people through resort golf, um, there's not much nuance to them for the most part. They're either got a ton of break or they're pretty flat. They're 
relatively big for the most part. Um, the one thing I did appreciate about them here, I go talking about things I liked about it after while I'm talking about things I don't like, but I did appreciate the fact that a lot of the approaches, the greens felt small and then you got up onto the green and you realized they were huge. And I, I did appreciate that part because playing it the second time you, you kind of trusted your, your, your feel a little bit more than your eyes and you could hit some different shots and, and, uh, and feel a little bit better about aiming to a, the middle of a green or playing a little bit short. Cause you know, you've got some space so you could get up and down. Um, so that's one part that I, I didn't like, but at the same time, the thing, the, the one piece that I did like is just the fact that the approach shots were interesting because the greens looked smaller than they actually were. But once you're on the greens, not a lot of not a lot of crazy putts. Maybe twelve had some wild putts for our group. Uh, the two times I went through it, um, that's the big Redan hole. But for the most part, when you're on them, we were over reading them a lot because I think maybe Northeast golfers, Donald Ross courses, and all all the stuff up here, you you tend to get greens that just break a lot more than the rest of the country. But that's one thing. Uh, the first three holes feel a little bit perfunctory like they just had to be built um you can you play the first hole plays out it's a par five and then the second hole is a par three that basically plays straight back towards the clubhouse it's about a hundred and maybe 160 yard hole uphill and then the third hole is a shortish par four where you could a driver you could lay up uh, but it runs alongside the first hole, like the first half of the first hole where the first time I played it, I kind of hit a ropey hook with my driver ended up basically in the first fairway T box area and uh, hit it on and, and, uh, and made par. So those, those first three holes, you just, they're almost like a warm up um, in some respects. And then the fourth hole, you kind of, you're standing on that and you're, you realize this is, this is where the golf cart course really begins. You've, uh, you've got just a bunch of, of good views and, and four kind of gets you off on that. You got to think about your tee shot a little bit more. You've got some things to aim at, some things to avoid, um, uh, for sure. But those first three holes just felt a little bit, uh, perfunctory for sure. 14 and 15 for me felt the same way. The first time I played them, they, those two holes kind of jut, they go out and then back. Um, just to kind of almost just a little peninsula of land that sticks out into some, uh, some cliff, uh, treed area. And the second shot on 14 was a stunner. The first time we played it really good. The tee shot was kind of quirky. You're told by the ranger at the starter, the, the starter at the beginning of the round that you want to keep your ball right of an aiming stick that they have in the fairway or else if you go left of it your ball's gone um and then you got bunkers kind of running down the right side that basically splits the 14th and 15th hole and then 15 comes back up and it's a blind uphill shot you're hitting over the over some bunkers um and it just felt a little bit like nah, these aren't great but the second time playing them, I like them a lot more. I like the second shot at a 15. It's a green that's sitting in the ground. You don't see a lot of those um, during the round either. You're usually hitting kind of uphill to one or downhill to one. You got stuff in the front, or you can roll it down a hill. But um, but 15 was just simple, sat in the ground, and uh, it was it was pretty good. I think the worst hole in the course is 16. And, you know, one, two, three are fine holes. They just, they felt kind of like they're, you're just kind of warming up 16, not really a lot of space there to hit a tee shot. You've got water left. You've got a bunker, the second shots, maybe one of the harder shots on the course, but not for at really any good reason. It's a plateaued green. It's two tiers. Um, you're hitting like a long to mid iron into it. Uh, so I, I, I just didn't, I didn't love 16, after playing it and then going back and playing it a second time and, and playing it a little differently and hitting three wood still just not really, not really my cup of tea, but that's probably the one bad hole on the course. One, two, and three, not bad holes. Uh, 14, 15, definitely not bad holes. Uh, but 16 is, is definitely a, a bad hole. Um, and then just to finish off with one more thing that I liked that I, that I missed, and then we'll get to uh top, a mountaintop and top of the rock. 
I just like that there were a few holes that were almost drivable. You had, I think I mentioned you had options off tee boxes, but the fifth hole, you, we, we had conversations. We even, I love holes where you're playing the course a second time and you're talking about how you're going to play it on the way to the round. The second time you're playing it, me and Elliot were kind of like, I, I was like, I'm going to driver again. I know, I know what I'm going to do. And Elliot hit, Elliot hit a three wood, uh, the first time and kind of pulled it and ended up in some trouble. And, um, there were, there was a few holes like that where you just have a couple different options. The, the third hole was like that too. You could hit driver. I get driver both times. I kind of put myself in trouble both times. One time I got bailed out another time I didn't. Um, so just, just, I, I love when golf courses just give you options and it's not just options that you always play the same one. Um, you know, I think there's holes like that where you just have a philosophy and this is how you're going to play it. But I like when holes and golf courses might make you actually consider seriously or actually hit a different shot the second or third time around because you were burned or because the wind's a little different or because the tee box is in a little bit of a different place or you just you just philosophically have made your mind has changed your mind because of the way it went the first time. Um, Love holes like that. I love golf courses that have a few holes like that, at least. And Ozarks definitely did. So Ozarks National, my favorite. Absolutely loved it. If I went back and you gave me five rounds at the three 18-hole golf courses, I think I'm playing Ozarks three times. I'm playing the other each. I'm playing each other one once. I think I might even drag my feet going back to Buffalo Ridge. But if I'm going back one time, I guess I'd play Buffalo Ridge just to really get to see it one more time before deciding like this place is not for me, but I'm playing Ozarks three times. Absolutely. Payne's Valley is great too, but this is where, this is where my, my heart is at big Cedar. So that is Ozarks national. Absolutely. A must play. Even if you just live in the area and you have, you know, you want to splurge on a round and you want to drive an hour and go play. Absolutely do it. It is an outstanding, outstanding golf course. Okay. And let's wrap up just with a few quick thoughts about, Mountaintop and Top of the Rock, the other two golf courses. They're also right now building a third short course called the Cliffhanger. And that course is right above Payne's Valley and below the clubhouse. I mean, it is, it's called Cliffhanger for a reason. It's just going to really be on the side of a cliff. And uh, it's going to have, it's not going to be, eight, I don't think it's going to be 18 holes but they're all going to be short holes. It'll be kind of a short, fun, short, fun golf course. Um, and there was even chatter while we were on the property that there might be lights there. So you could play some night golf, but also, you know, other people said, well, the owner of big Cedar doesn't really love things sticking out of the ground. And when, when I heard that, I real I realized looking around that, that's very true. There's very little as far as kind of infrastructure built up. There isn't really any lights. If there are lights, they're on the roadside or on bridges. Uh, not a lot of stuff kind of sticking out of the ground. There's a big water tower that, uh, that is in Branson, um, or Hollister maybe where, uh, in Missouri, whatever town it is, but there's not a lot of things sticking out of the ground. And I thought that was interesting. So it might be lighted. It might not be, but they're building another short course top of the rock. We'll, we'll start there. Top of the rock is a nine hole golf course. It is completely ridiculous as far as just the, the design and getting around. You're in a golf cart. You're not allowed to walk. It's very clear why uh, a lot of long rides, because this is just like, let's find the coolest places to put par three holes and build them. And that's what Jack Nicholas did. They are kind of big and flashy. There's some that look a lot like, you know, they'd want to be in Augusta National with big white round sand traps, skinny small greens. But then you get other other holes that are charming, and you're hitting over water to an island green. Um, there's a few just stunning golf shots you get to hit with um, that with tabletop lake out in the background where you almost you're hitting into the lake almost just feels like your ball could end up there little 80 yard shots way downhill and you're just trying to figure out how to precisely pick the right the right club so it's a it's a really it's a really cool place it is not 
on the same property as Payne's Valley, Ozarks National, even Buffalo Ridge or Mountaintop. It is a completely separate place, and it's also a place worth going. We played it in the late afternoon. Then we got dinner out at Top of the Rock. They have a, a few restaurants out there, a couple little like cool bars and speakeasies, and um, just a just a kind of a, a, a neat place to just check out and explore. They've got this huge cavern system that they slowly discovered over the course of building up uh, this area as well. So there's just there's a lot to see there. They also have Arnold Palmer's uh, old barn. This is one of the restaurants that was moved from Latrobe, Pennsylvania to Top of the Rock. It's then reconstructed. So they have Arnold Palmer's old barn, and that's a place you can go and get lunch. Uh, it's it's just it's it's completely crazy. Very cool place. And they also do a sunset ceremony every night. So they played bagpipes. They had uh, they fired off a, an old cannon at sunset. Beautiful setting, and you know a bunch of people are out there having their cocktails and just hanging out and watching. So that whole area is really cool. But it, there's just nine holes of golf there, and we we kind of timed it nicely for for the way we we did it. Um, so top of the rock, definitely worth just going and, and checking out. Even if you don't want to play the nine hole golf course, I would recommend you do. It's 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 kind of fun. It's it's hard and you're going to have a, a bunch of like mid irons into small greens and over water. And Elliot and I played Ozarks in the morning and then played uh, that nine holer in the afternoon. And my other two buddies, Dan and Roberto met us. Uh, they flew in a little later on the day that we, on the day we played Ozarks. So they didn't get to play with us that morning. So that was their warm up. I wouldn't say it's a great warm up spot because it is kind of hard if you're hopping off, if you're getting off a flight and just trying to go and play some golf, it's harder than, uh, than you know, a typical nine hole golf course would be, but stunning views, fun shots. You're hitting a bunch of different clubs. It's not a short course and it, I would, I would recommend, I would recommend playing it. So that's, that's top of the rock. And then the last one is mountaintop, which is their walking golf course. So this is the only one you are able to walk over the course of the five um, courses that they have at Big Cedar. This is the one to start your trip at. Elliot and I showed up. Um, we got there on a Thursday. We landed around noon. We got into our cabin, and we had a, a kind of late afternoon, early evening tea time. And it's a 13-hole course. It's another golf course that is you're hitting almost all of your clubs, except for three wood. And there's actually a hole you might have to hit three wood, but you're hitting a bunch of long irons. You're hitting a bunch of wedges and it's just a delightful, delightful golf experience. Um, we loved playing it first. We got a couple beers from the, from the clubhouse. It was a great way to just loosen up. We hit some wild wedge shots because we were playing behind a six -um, I believe there was a, you know, we were playing a bunch of, behind a bunch of guys. So they were slow, which was fine. They were six. So we would just, put a couple balls down and, and chip and putt and just goof around. And like we were kids again, Ellie and I grew up playing golf together, uh, you know, elementary, middle school, high school, all the way up. Now we're, we're both 40. And, uh, it was like this awesome throwback evening of just remembering being a kid and waiting for our moms to pick us up. And we just had like 20 minutes on the putting green and we were hitting ridiculous shots. It was, it was that kind of place. It was so much fun. You can kind of pick your tees, so there are T markers down, but everything is short grass. So once you leave a green, you could just plop a ball down. You could walk up wherever you wanted. The all the short grass, you, you kind of you can make out T boxes. You can kind of see flat areas, but you could you could pick anywhere and you could make it everything really short. You could play everything from the tips. Uh, there's some cool little walks. It was a kind of a foggy, misty evening. It was the, really the only time we saw any rain on our entire trip. After that, it was just extraordinarily hot. And I got like some Ireland vibes. I know I've, I've talked about Hawaii on this podcast now and, 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 and big sky country and we're in Missouri and it just, it was very green. It was drizzling rain. It was kind of wide open land. Uh, there was mist and fog rolling in over some hills. I spent most of my summers growing up, uh, a chunk of every summer in Ireland visiting family. So it's a place that I kind of know well. And um, it just, I got a couple little little glimpses of like, oh man, this could be, I could be in Ireland right now. 
really, really fun, really great spot. And then you, we got dinner in the clubhouse there, good food in there. We sat out another ex, exceptional sunset, just stunning sunset from the clubhouse, which they, this clubhouse shares uh, shares itself with Payne, Payne's Valley. So if you're playing Top of the Rock or Payne's Valley, this is where you start your round. Um, really, really fun. I, I wish we could have gone back there and brought um, – brought Roberto and Dan to see it as well, because it was just, it was a lot of fun. I could have played there every night. Uh, if you are going and you want to be like a golf head and make that, you, you just want to play a ton of golf and be close to the golf courses. We stayed close to the registration and close to kind of the big Cedar lodge area, but they do have cottages that are right there. And I got the sense when it starts to get dark and, um, the course quiets down guys will come out and play five or six holes and just, and just have a, have a blast out there without really needing a tea time. They could just kind of sneak out. Maybe they do need tea time, but it just it had that it had that kind of golf resort feel. There was the most I felt that vibe over the course of the four days we were there was when we were at the Paynes Valley top of the rock area, um, just because of those cottages and that that kind of energy is a big putting green up there too. So a lot of money being exchanged on the putting green. They have a putting course. I think Tom Watson designed, um, Gary player wouldn't want to leave out Gary player. He's the one who designed the walking course. Jack Nicholas designed top of the rock. So, you know, talking about golf courses today, you've got core Crenshaw, you've got Jack Nicholas, you've got Gary player, you've got Tom Watson, um, all kind of have a hand in something at big Cedar, which is, uh, which is kind of cool. So that's, um, that's, that's puts a bow on the entire big Cedar catalog of things. So I would encourage you go listen to the podcast. I did just about my five big things. If you're thinking about a trip, you're looking for somewhere different to go. Maybe you've, ex you've done the, the abandoned thing. You've done the sand Valley thing. You've done the Pinehurst thing. You've done the stream song thing. You've done all those things. Congratulations. That's incredible. Maybe you're looking for something a little different. Maybe you've got family that you want to bring with you who doesn't play golf. Um, this trip was initially supposed to be my wife and another couple. And, uh, and they unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, they, they got pregnant and unfortunately couldn't come with us on the trip because it timed out perfectly with, um, with their due date. So they didn't make the trip. So I, I found three buddies to go instead, but my wife would have had a blast and she does not play golf. She wouldn't have seen a golf course while we were there. She could have gone to the pool and gone on the lake and gone to the spa and hung out and, and read and done and done whatever she wanted to do. There's, there's just a, a bunch of things to do. There's live shows in Branson that are supposed to be incredible. So there's a, there's a bunch of stuff to do. So I would encourage you to go listen to that. Cause I just, I, I talk for a bit about, you know, five or six things that you should absolutely know. And then my Buffalo Ridge, my Payne's Valley, I did pods on each of those. And, uh, and now you're here listening to this one. So Go listen to all of those. I would encourage anyone, if you're looking at a trip, to go go to Big Cedar. It was fun. It was a good trip. And it's easier to get to, especially from the East Coast, than maybe people realize. So that is it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Please, once again, my newsletter, baystategolf.beehive.com. Beehive is B-E-E-H-I-I-V.com. Looking forward to uh, next week's episode, getting out of Missouri and talking about some other stuff that's going on in the Bay State. It's middle of summer. Things are humming. And I've got a bunch of really fun golf lined up, uh, new courses and at some old courses that I've already played. Uh, but it's starting to get starting to get interesting, starting to get good. And I'm looking forward to sharing it all with you here and on my newsletter and on my Instagram, Bay State underscore golf. We will see you next week. <laughs>